Our fight began on June 6, 1944, when 55,000 of us landed on the beaches of Normandy at a terrible cost of lives. We drove the Germans back. And by December, our front line stretched through Belgium and Luxembourg to the German border. The snowy Ardent Forest was called the Ghost Front because it was so quiet. We thought we could finally rest up because it seemed the German army was on its last legs. So we didn't have much ammunition and went on routine patrol while we waited for our replacements, mostly green recruits who hadn't seen any action. What we didn't know was that a desperate Hitler was secretly planning a last-ditch counteroffensive, a mad plan to create a bulge in the Allied line. At dawn on December 16th, all hell broke loose when a quarter of a million German soldiers savagely attacked without warning. German tanks and troops poured out of the woods and into the surrounding towns and villages. We were caught completely off guard, and there were places where we were outnumbered 10 to 1. Panic ensued. We couldn't see where the gunfire was coming from. We were afraid to fire back because we might shoot our own troops. Adding to the chaos, German soldiers masquerading as American officers infiltrated behind the lines, telling us to change the direction of our fire. Once, we almost did hit our own troops. Our outnumbered infantry battled two equally deadly enemies, the Germans and the worst winter in 40 years. Halfway through the battle, we still hadn't gotten our winter boots. If our socks froze to our feet and the medic tried to pull them off, the flesh might come off with them. The bitter cold caused frostbite, trench foot, and gangrene. It was incredibly painful. And to this day, some of us still suffer from that winter's effects. We fought from frozen foxholes and five-foot-high snowdrifts. Too often, the choice was to move and be shot or lie perfectly still and freeze to death. A thick blanket of fog and heavy snow prevented any air support, so many infantrymen were forced to surrender with tragic consequences. Near the village of Malmedy, Germans massacred 97 American prisoners. We had only one option, be captured and executed or fight like hell. And it was the American foot soldier who would really turn the tide. Ordinary guys like the cooks, clerks, and army musicians who had never fired a gun in combat became heroes. The walking wounded were patched up and sent back into battle. Throughout an agonizing month, it would take some 600,000 American GIs to finally push the Germans back. Our sacrifices were devastating. 47,000 were wounded, 23,000 missing or presumed captured, and almost 20,000 soldiers were killed, over 80,000 casualties in all. In the Battle of the Bulge, every GI tried to put aside his fears and face the enemy. I want to share with you the memories of one of those brave soldiers, infantryman George Karambalis. It was Christmas night, December 25th, 1944. But the snow was not one of nature's beautiful decorations. It was just as deadly as the German machine guns and tanks. Some of that night's events are only hazy recollections, but other memories are still very vivid, especially the premonitions I had of the impending tragedy. First, I kept stumbling for no apparent reason. I even dropped my rifle, which I'd never done before. Then I got tangled up in a few strands of barbed wire and nearly lost my helmet. When we got to the top of the hill, it was very quiet. 
Like when the scout and the cowboy and Indian movies say, yeah, it's too quiet. Our orders were to go through the woods, firing and screaming in order to demoralize the Germans. But all of a sudden, they began to return our fire with the machine gun. I fired a grenade, saw it hit, and was certain I had knocked the machine gun nest out. But as I turned to crawl back, I felt something crash into my left thigh. It was like I had been struck with a baseball bat. The medic crawled up to me, checked me out, and applied a dressing. As he started to leave, there was a blinding flash and deafening explosion that seemed right next to us. I felt a sharp pain on my right foot. The medic groaned and fell over me. I'll help you, I said, but it was already dead. Shrapnel in the German tank had almost cut him in half. Then I heard screams all around. Some of the men were calling for their medic, while others were just crying. I remember two in particular. One who was screaming that he couldn't move, and the other who kept moaning, I'm dying, I'm dying. I started to crawl toward the voices when another explosion knocked me out and I'm unconscious. I don't know how long I was out, but when I came to, I thought I was dead. What had been pitch dark was now fairly bright with fires burning and flares going off. My first thought was that I was in hell. I slowly regained my senses, but when I started to move, I realized my legs had been smashed. I tried to sit up just as another shell came in and I fell flat again. This time I was very frightened because a small fragment hit me above the eye and I suddenly couldn't see. I thought I was blind. But when I wiped the blood away, I could see. I looked down at my legs, and my right foot felt like it was on hot coals. Time had lost all meaning, and I had no idea how long this whole thing had, been, had taken. I tried to get up, hoping against hope that somehow I could walk, but it was hopeless. I crawled over to the other men. Their legs were shattered so completely that the slightest movement was impossible. Compared to the others, I was in fairly good shape. And I could have, would have to try to get back and help send for help. The next few minutes were the most heart-rending moments I have ever known. I'm sure that all the wounded doubted I'd ever get back and knew that even if I did, help for them wouldn't arrive in time. They gave me messages for wives, sweethearts, and families. Two of the men had babies whom they had never seen. And these last farewells to their loved ones made me break down. After reassuring them I'd have help back in time, I started crawling to the edge of the road. The Germans started firing again, but nothing seemed to matter except finding friendly troops because I knew that before too long I would pass out and freeze to death. Finally, I heard someone walking toward me on the road. I was scared that they might be Germans and that they would finish me off. I took a grenade from my pocket, pulled the pin, and called out, what company are you guys from? A Company, 3rd Platoon, one answered. I replaced the pin and pleaded with them to take me with them. I knew what a burden I was to these two soldiers, but they made me a seat with a jacket and their rifles and carried me to the first aid station. As for the men on the hill, I never saw them again. I heard later that none of them made it. May God bless them all. Uh.